Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Vampire Survivors, shall we? Doing a complete beginner's guide to this amazing game, and we're going to start a brand new file. I'm not going to spoil anything for you in this guide. I'm not going to tell you how to min-max, reach the unlocks, the fastest, make the most money, or anything like that. Instead, I'm going to start a brand new game with nothing unlocked, just like you would if you were coming into the game for the first time, and explain some of the fundamentals, the controls, the UI, and some tips and tricks so that you understand enough about the game and you can enjoy it, but not spoil the mystery and the surprise of what happens as you progress in the game. Vampire Survivors is an absolute delight to play. It inspired its own kind of genre immediately of copycat games that were trying to recreate the mechanics because they were so well done here. And without further ado, I'm going to jump right into a new game. So when you start out, you'll notice that all you can select is Antonio. Um, Imelda, Pasqualina, and Gennaro are all kind of... Uh, blacked out like we can't choose them but it gives you a hint that this is a game about unlocking characters and we know that there's more options but right now we've got just Antonio who is uh, very clearly a vampire hunter inspired by Simon Belmont. This game is very much uh, inspired by Castlevania. So Antonio uses a whip and it says Gains 10% more damage every 10 levels, max of plus 50%. So this is the benefit of this attack that he starts out with. So this is kind of the base weapon that you begin with. But as you'll see, um, we're going to get many more attacks other than this. So we're going to say, okay, very good. And we're just going to click confirm. And he highlights, and then we say start. Now, again you're going to see a bunch of different options for stages to go to, but we can't get there because we haven't discovered them. So right now we can only play on the Mad Forest, once a thriving haven, now a dumping ground for evil. A vampire is said to be the root of this evil, but we can find only mayhem and roast chicken. Indeed, roast chicken, delicious, fills our health. So... There's a time limit of 30 minutes. The clock speed is at 1, and our move speed for this level, we get a 10% bonus. Every level has different attributes that it begins with and requirements and enemies and things. So just pay attention to these as you select. But right now, there's only one choice. Let's jump in. So when you start Vampire Survivors, immediately what's going to take you is the fact that you can't do anything except move. I didn't understand this at first. I thought I had some control. You really don't. I got hit by a bat. All you can do is attack periodically. So Antonio is going to attack with his whip in the direction that he's facing. Okay, so you can control sort of where you hit, and it's somewhat aimable. But it just happens every so often. Now, you'll notice I'm picking up gems. This is what you're trying to do. You want to walk around. After you kill enemies, they can drop different things. And usually what they drop are gems of different colors. These gems give you experience, which you use to level up. The bar at the top of the screen reflects your experience. Okay, there's also some other things up there that we can look at while the game is paused. You see what weapons and buffs I have obtained with this character. Right now, all I have is the whip. That's in the upper left, underneath the flashing experience bar. You'll see all these gems raining down. This is the celebration screen when you level up. Now, also in the upper right, you'll see how many enemies you've killed. That's the number next to the skull. And how much money you have, the coin, we have zero. In the dead center is the time that has elapsed. It's been 40 seconds so far. Time freezes when you get to a screen like this. Remember, 30 minutes is the time limit that we have on this level. All right, 
So now once you level up, you get a choice, and this is the kind of random roguelike element of the game where you get to select between right now only three choices, but as you see, as it says below, increase your luck for a chance to get four choices. So if we have more luck, we could maybe get four choices to choose from. Now, all of these are going to do different things. So the Laurel will shield us from damage when active. So it gives you a shield, which basically allows you to kind of take a hit without taking any damage. Um, then the shield is broken, then you can take damage like normal, but if you don't take damage for a bit, the Laurel turns back on and you get the shield back. An axe is going to throw an axe very similar to in Castlevania in like a sweeping arc and the knife fires quickly in a faced direction. So really there's no other way to guide you on this except to just say choose different options and see what you like. Now I'm going to take an axe because it does a lot of damage. You can't aim it. The knife is better for aiming, um, but it does a lot of damage up front, but it doesn't do that much damage as you carry it unless you upgrade it. And part of the fun of the game is figuring out what upgrades what like how do i upgrade my knife and make it even better and i'm not going to spoil any of that for you you can just learn it through different combinations i'm going to choose the axe so now you'll see um occasionally i will throw an axe and you see it does like 20 damage so the damage numbers popping out from the enemies reflect how much damage i'm doing to them i'm going to pick up all these gems so what you want to do, at least what I like to do, is kind of move in a circle. You're moving around in a circle, you're using all of your weapons. That blue bat is uh, kind of like a special enemy that will drop something nice for us if we can kill it. New enemies are moving in, these kind of shambling zombies. And it's like a shooter almost, you're just kind of dodging all these things. Now I like to move in circles to just group the enemies together but not move too far away from the gems that I want to collect. Now I'm coming back to collect some gems and we've leveled up again. Now you'll notice that not only can I get new stuff, okay? You see in the upper left, I have my whip, I have my ax that I've earned. I can get a magic wand, I can get Santa water, which is holy water, or I can even level up my whip to fire another projectile. Now, in my opinion, at first, you really want to try to get as many different attacks going as you can, unless you're going for a specific build when you know more about what you're going for later. But at first, let's just try to get as many things as we can. So I'll take holy water, this is fine, and just so you can see it. Okay, so you see that blue kind of shimmering cloud? I threw the holy water. There it goes again. We're throwing an ax, we're whipping things. And when you can, you can try to stand in and do a nice whip attack. But again, it, it happens very slowly. Now, the reason I recommend doing circles is because you don't want to move away from your gems and forget where they are. We currently, I can push p start to pause the game, okay? Um, but that's all I have. I don't really have, oh, watch out for this big wave of bats. So now things are going to get a little bit harder. You see that big wave of bats coming in. And I'm just going to get all this experience, even though I take some damage and level up. If you... This map just goes around and around and around. Um, it's enormous. So if you get too far away from your gems, you might lose, lose track of where they are and not be able to claim them. They don't ever disappear. The only thing that can happen with the gems is if you move too far away off the screen a bunch of blue gems might consolidate into one of these different colored gems. And um, the green gems are the next best, and then the red are uh, better after that. And they just mean they give you more experience. But you don't lose anything. But if you can't find them, well, then you won't be able to level up. So you want to stay close enough to be able to try to get them. And yet, you want to avoid getting hit. So it's kind of a balancing act. Now we've leveled up here. And also, you'll notice on the left of the screen there is a treasure chest that has dropped. So that bat that had the glow around it, that means it has a treasure. It's kind of like an elite mob. And it drops a chest for us, and we're going to go get that because it's fantastic. So 
we could level up our whip to fire another projectile. We could level up our holy water to fire another projectile and increase the area. Or we could get the Bible. Now, I'm going to get the Bible. Um, it's not great, but I like it because um, it just hits things around you. Some of these weapons that you're going to get do more damage. Some of them don't do as much damage, but they have great utility. Like, they, they fire fast, or they keep enemies away from you. And you just have to kind of choose what you want for your particular build and what you like as a player. Now, your options are limited. In the upper left, you'll see there's a bunch of boxes. You don't get to choose indefinite weapons and, and items. Um, th there's a maximum right now that you can get. Now, I believe it is 12, but I'm not sure if that's only gotten through unlocks or if it's based on um, any other factors. I can't quite run. It's been a while since I've played, but just know that you can't just keep taking different ones. Eventually, you'll get locked out, and all you will be able to do is level up the existing items. Now, at first, that doesn't matter, but later, you're going to be wanting going for different combinations um, when you know more about them. But right now, I'm just going to take this Bible to just science and show you what it does. Ouch. So the Bible, every once in a while, just makes a Bible float around us. And I'm coming to get this treasure chest. Bing. So when you get a treasure, you get this awesome screen, and it says treasure found. And I say, okay, open it up. And you'll see a blue beam shooting out, and we're getting money, and we got a Bible. So the treasure basically will power up one of what you already have and give you some money, okay? So we got ourselves a Bible upgrade, and we got 108 coins. Okay, fantastic. Now, this game is a rogue light in the sense that if we die, it's permadeath. We have to start over from the beginning. But rogue light means that there is an internal progression system that is behind that that you are elevating as you go and you do that through coins so when you die and you are on the selection menus you can start to spend these coins to purchase upgrades for your account which will make you stronger unlock new characters um, and pump up your stats give you new options so that you can cover more content now um Right here, we have some choices, and I'm going to take the shield. I'm going to take one defensive ability, and you'll see that now my character has a blue shield around him, and this just helps us kind of get some of these gems without having to worry about taking damage. Now, you see these flaming beacons. You can break these, and they have, you know, right now we're getting coins and things, but sometimes um, they have food in them, the big roast chicken like they were talking about. So these are good to break just to get money, but occasionally you can get even better things than that. There's all sorts of different pickups that you can get in the game, and some of them are tremendous. There's the chicken, so you see we eat that, and we filled up our health, and we leveled up. So now at this point, there's no new options for us. These are all options we already had. So given that, what do we want? All right, well, I'll tell you what. I can make my shield better. I could get more projectiles with my whip. Or I could get more axes. And um, I'll take more axes. You'll see we fire two axes now. And let's just go ahead and pick up a bunch of gems. Now, as time passes in the game, things are going to start getting harder and harder. There's a money bag, which is a different kind of pickup that you can get, which is just a whole bunch of coins at one time. So you see there's these, like, skeleton dudes. That are sham they have some glaives and spears and bandanas. And again, just keep trying to go in a circle so you can cover the ground that you've cleared and move the enemies away from to collect your gems and get experience. Because if you don't get experience, one of the things I messed up at the first time I played was I just went in one direction trying to stay alive. But if you're not collecting gems, the game is going to scale faster than you are getting strong and you're going to get overwhelmed. You need to be doing your best to collect as many gems as possible. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and 
upgrade my holy water to fire two projectiles. Again, you can't, you really don't get to control very much in this game. So it's very important to make choices that benefit you. Like you see, the holy water just goes where it goes. The axes just fire when they fire in the, you know, the direction and the arc style that they want. <laughs> and so it's more about moving around, staying alive, and making good choices when you level up. At first, don't worry too much about it, but this will get more important as the game gets harder. Now, do I want to take a knife right now? Um, I'm not super excited about a knife. It's okay. Sometimes I like to save slots for other power-ups. So instead, um, I'll go ahead and upgrade my whip. I've been not doing it, but... Now, if you upgrade the whip, the cool thing is you'll see that it fires behind you. This is actually pretty useful. So you fire in front and behind with it. And it just gives you a bigger area to attack from. And you don't have to be facing the enemies, you know, which is kind of awkward when you're playing this circle pattern and you're trying to move away from the enemies. So now we're much more effective. And... Look at all these gems we get to collect. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, so we could get armor to reduce incoming damage by one, or get a knife, or g upgrade our whip. I'm gonna tell you as a Vampire Survivors player, another mistake that I made up front was valuing defense too highly. Defense is okay in this game, it's fine, but to be honest, you'd rather kill things more quickly then try to protect yourself. You want like one or two defensive abilities, but on the whole, you want offense. And you want defense as well later in the run when it becomes more difficult. Right now, I'm not really getting hit that much. So instead of taking armor, I'm actually going to just upgrade my whip. So now it does five more damage. The upgrades at each stage are different. Sometimes you get to fire more projectiles. Sometimes they do more damage. And uh-oh, look at this. I'm going to pause the game so I can talk to you about this. You see this ring of flowers that is coming at me. There are certain things that happen based on the time that has elapsed. So you see we're at that five minute mark. This ring of flowers is um, has appeared and it's slowly getting smaller to trap me in. So we have a shield, so we could just run through this ring. Um, but just be aware of these kinds of things, because if you're not expecting it, you can take a whole lot of damage. Another thing, though, you can do is just try to kill some of the flowers and make a gap for yourself to escape through. So let's see if we can actually um, work on killing some of these just to make a little place for us to escape through. They have a lot of health, so um, we're going to need to work on that pretty well. There's also a treasure chest bat right here that I definitely want to kill. Um... Okay, we got it. I'm going to just sneak in and grab that chest right away. All right. And dance around. Money coming in. We got 160 coins, which is amazing. And we got axes. Right now, look at this. The base da damage of the axe that we fire two of just went up by 20. This is why axes are, you know, they do a lot of damage. Now, coins might not seem like a, a lot right now. But when we get done and you, we're going to spend these, you're going to see how valuable these are, and they are your objective. Staying alive, of course, is important. But in this game, what you're really trying to do is make money so that you can make your account strong enough, unlock enough characters to get further. So coins are kind of your goal. Even if you die, you keep all your coins. Okay, so... Just try to get as many coins as you can. Don't die, obviously, but coins are what we're going for. All right. And we leveled up. What do I want to level up? Look at this. If I level up my whip, it does more damage and the area increases. So now, like, the whip is just bigger and it does more damage. Okay, so... Oh, my shield went down, so I took some damage and we cleared it. So after a certain amount of time as well, you see that that entire ring of flowers evaporated so um sometimes you have to kill to get through it and other times it will just evaporate 
after enough time has elapsed. It looks like 30 seconds was all that did. But what happens that's dangerous in those situations is you get fenced in in a really tight space. And if you don't have enough damage, you're going to get obliterated by the enemies that you're trapped with. All right, so now there's a Praying Mantis, and there's just enemies that are way, way harder that aren't dying as easily. We eat that chicken. Another tip about chicken, it does not disappear. Nothing in this game disappears. So you can, if you get a chicken and you don't need it, your character has like a magnetism range where they kind of pull in the power-ups around them. And if you just don't pick it up, oh, here we go. Let's get a power-up. So this is a, um, we're freezing time. Let me finish my thought about the chicken, though. If you see a chicken and you don't need it, just don't get close to it so you don't pick it up. And then just kind of remember where it's at loosely so that you can come back and get it if you need it later. Now, there are also temporary pickups that you can get in this game that have incredibly devastating effects. This one's pretty good. So we freeze everything and we can just walk around here now and kill these enemies without them moving. So I can just stand here and do my whip, throw axes, you know stuff like that and just kind of chew through things oh there's a treasure chest right there we definitely want to get that but let's wait for our laurel to turn back on nice okay um i'm gonna upgrade the bible actually and pick up this treasure okay now sometimes you get a super treasure chest like this one you see how it has three stripes? This is going to give us three power-ups and a ton of coins. These are the best. It's random, but look at this. We get two whip power-ups and a, a Bible power-up and 524 coins. So base damage up by five on our whip, level five. Then base damage up again and area up. Amazing. And now the Bible lasts longer and its base damage is up. So we're getting very, very strong. All right, so let's go ahead and start chewing through some of these enemies. There are some higher colored gems in there. You see the teal gems, the aqua gems. We want those. Give us a big boost of experience. Now, how much experience you need to go up a level scales, obviously. So the first few levels happen like incredibly fast. And then as you tail off big money bag there, it's going to take a lot more to get us up a level. All right. So we've got our shield rolling. Just kind of stand here. You see now we have two Bibles that are spinning around. And, ooh, here we go. Here's a cross. Watch this. If I pick this up, we just vaporize everything on the screen. So this is outrageously powerful, and it gives you an opportunity to just kill many, many things around you and then go pick up gems really quickly before the enemies enclose you again so let's go get this treasure chest and a red gem that'll definitely level us up all right we got a regular chest okay we got another bible power up and 118 coins and this gives us another projectile okay and there we go oh no the red gem didn't level us up i was wrong about that i i miscalculated how much experience we needed okay so again two defensive power-ups and one offensive power-up i do not want armor i'm going to take the holy water and we're just going to kind of sneak through here wait for our shield to get back and now this level is good because it's just wide open but Something you want to just be mindful of is watch out for trees, pillars, environmental objects that you can get stuck on. Oops, I took some damage there. Because you really don't, you really need to be able to move. Mobility is key. All right. Now, the more I think about it, I'm seeing the same options. I'm realizing that I haven't unlocked very many options. So as you go, there's going to be way more choices to pick from. I'm just starting a brand new account. And it's hard to go back to zero when I've, um, like, my account with my main account, it's, I've got so many things unlocked. Um, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to take the axe. So the axe, as it passes through two more enemies, this just means it hits more things. 
So it, before it disappears, it's just going to pass through more enemies doing all of its damage, which sounds really good to me. All right. Just kind of going through. We've already killed a thousand enemies. Pretty nice. Eight minutes in. Okay. Um, definitely going to take the axe to fire three axes and just let it happen. So, again, periodically there'll be those waves of bats and, and the like. And you just kind of need to look for gaps. I'm going to eat that chicken in the enemies so that you can sneak through. They don't move very fast, but neither do we. All right. And what do we got here? Money bag. All right. Stay ahead of that thing. Now, you move in, like, infuriatingly slow, but there are power-ups that will let you move faster that I like a good bit. All right. And, oh, treasure chest enemy. So let's kill this elite and get some cat. And hopefully a bunch of power-ups. Now, these big bats are much harder. You see, they're just, like, taking the, the axes like they're nothing. They're like, whatever. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to chew through that treasure chest mob. Oh. Okay. Almost got caught there by the wave without my shield. I might want to power up my shield at some point here. That's worth considering. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, magic wand. Yeah, we were offered this before, but... Um, ooh, the base damage of axes up is amazing, though. No, I'll take magic wand. That's fine. So now you'll see that we just occasionally will shoot this little magic wand at the enemy that's closest to us. It's just another source of damage. You want a lot of different things happening. Okay, and at the 10-minute mark, the um, flowers are moving in, and there's a giant praying mantis over there, which is uh, terrifying. I'm actually just going to use my shield to push through the flowers so that I don't get trapped with that big praying mantis. They were kind of like boss-type enemies. He'll drop good stuff, but he's quite formidable. Okay, now you see that arrow that's in the center right of the screen? That's indicating that there is something good there. It's usually a treasure chest. Um, actually, I think it's always a treasure chest, but sometimes it's another type of item as well. Um, let's go see what it is. The flowers are still there, by the way. You see, th this time they did not dissipate at the 30 second mark. They might at a minute mark. I'm just going to walk around and I'm going to see what uh, this is pointing to... It's a treasure chest. Okay, great. Let's go pick it up. All right, now, at one minute, the flowers disappeared, but you'll see that there's a wave of skeletons coming in on the left. All right, let's get this. Okay, we got a whip upgrade. Now, the game will always tell you what it does on the bottom, so you can see it does just more damage for us, alright? Level 7. Now we're trapped by skeletons, so you need to clear your way through. These are much easier, though, than the flowers, but at this point in the level, you're going to start getting a lot of enemies, and this is like when you might die, um, if you haven't already, which is just, you're going to get swarmed, and if you're not strong enough doing damage, it's going to uh, be a bad time. All right, our shield is off. Less than ideal. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to power up my axe. I thought about powering up my shield, but no, I need to be doing more damage right now. Oh, God. All right, so I'm going to take some damage, trying to move through, and just suffer that silently. Okay. I'm going to try to move over here and get these gems. There's a bunch of gems that we haven't picked up yet. Sometimes you just will have to take damage, and it's about, like, how can I minimize the amount of damage that I'm going to take um, in my quest to survive? Okay. Um, let's go ahead and 
start boosting up our Bible to see if it can help us create a buffer. If you can get these Bibles spinning really fast with a bunch of them, sometimes you can make a nice buffer around yourself. It's why I kind of like them. Here's just some chicken for us. Um, is that they don't do very much damage at all, but they at least affect an area around you to help clear space for yourself. Okay. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to boost the axe. It's kind of our best thing going right now just to help clear stuff. And another thing you have to remember about, you know, when you... Okay, don't go in that trap right there. That's like a hedgerow of flowers. That's a box that if you walk in there, you can't get out unless you... There's only one way in, basically. Another thing you have to remember is, like, you're clearing enemies all over the place. So sometimes you need to go back where you were and you're going to find out that, like you devastated the enemies, and there's just a million gems waiting for you to pick up. Like, look how many gems are down here. So, we just got some breathing room, we led the enemies up, and now we can come back down. Um, I'm going to continue leveling up my axe. Alright. Here we go. Now we found some spinach. The spinach is one of my favorites because it just boosts all your inflicted damage. So this is like every weapon that we have just does 10% more damage. Took a little damage from the, the wave of ghosts. And now we're taking a lot of damage, unfortunately. It's getting rough here, people. All right, let's see if we can make some space. Clear anything out. No, no, no. We've died. My God. But we did okay. So we got ourselves up to level 20. In the upper right above your coins is your character level in the experience bar. We got to level 20. We survived for a good amount of time, and we got 1,100 coins. So, you know, don't worry about dying. That's the game. But you're not going to be strong enough to, like, clear this level unless you're some kind of professional player without some of these power-ups. So now, once I quit, you'll see we unlock a bunch of achievements, okay? And you get this cool screen that tells you um, how long you survived, you know, how much money, gives you statistics. And it, I like, it shows you, like, what weapons you had and what did the most damage and what did the most DPS for you. Now, it's not always the best indicator. Um, you have to remember, like, the magic wand is low because I only had it for three minutes. And, you know, sometimes weapons don't do good DPS, but they're extremely useful. It just depends. But you see how the axe was just, like, really, really wrecking things for us. And we see how many items we picked up. And you see that we unlocked a bunch of new things. Okay, so we unlocked garlic. We unlocked the fire wand. We unlocked the cross. By just doing things in the game, we unlocked the clock lancet. We unlocked the bracer. Okay, by getting the king bible to level four. Uh, we unlocked the empty tome by having six weapons at once. We unlocked the next level, the inlaid library. We unlocked the crown the wings, the hollow heart, and the um, pachone. So now we just say done, and let's take a look at this. The green button below the start button says power up, and if you click on this, now we have 1,100 coins to spend in the power up. Now, the beautiful thing about this place is that if you don't like what you did, you can always just refund your power-ups and get all your money back for free. So don't worry about that. Just make good choices here of things that you feel would help you. So, for example, this just helps you do more damage, right? This just helps you move faster, okay? This means um, some of these are insane. Uh, let's see. This says you fire one more projectile for everything that you've got, which is ridiculous, but it costs 5000 so you have to kind of just make some choices here with our 1100 what do you want to buy i think okay that you know move speed is super important as it is damage so i'll buy one move speed i'll buy one and i will buy i'm gonna buy more damage okay so now we do more damage now you could also buy magnet which is actually really useful all of these are super good right you could see what you know gain more gold you know um, get more experience 
um, depending on what you want. And I chose this, but you can choose whatever you want, and you can always just refund if you want. So now, when we start, we're going to be doing 10% more damage and moving 5% faster. And this is the loop. You go through, you unlock new characters, you unlock new weapons, you discover more about the game by trial and error, experimenting, comboing weapons. I will tell you, if you level up a weapon to max, okay, and you have another type of item, another weapon or defensive item, one of these power-ups, you might be able to level up your weapon even further. There are some sweet combinations that make the game even more fun. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to say try everything. Try to get some of your weapons to max level and see what happens. All right, everybody. I think this is a good look at vampire survivors explaining it for a complete beginner so you can play and enjoy the game you'll notice now that if i go to the start menu um i can select antonio okay but i can also play on stage two that we've unlocked but don't really do that yet um it, in my recommendation you want to build up on the mad forest first but you can always try it there's no penalty for dying except that you have to start over so Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about Vampire Survivors, please put those in the comments below. Take care.